What's an obvious sign someone's an American? This is a question on everyone's minds, or at least the front page of the internet, on Ask Reddit. Hi everyone, my name is Evan Edinger, the guy who every once in a while makes videos on Ask Reddit threads he finds interesting. And yeah, what is an obvious sign someone's an American? Let's see if we can just figure it out. First off, we got apparently the CIA trains American agents not to lean on things if they go undercover in a foreign country because Americans lean on anything they can while standing around. You know, absolute end of thread. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Please, if you're someone that is not American, I would love to hear, do you also like to lean? I lean on everything. I would hope that wasn't because of my upbringing. Maybe it's just because of all the retail jobs I've had in the States in which you're not allowed to sit. Comfort? No, you must suffer so that the customer knows you're suffering for them. Please tip us. I got uh, told off for it at the gym the other day for leaning on the new machine. And I was like, hey, listen, it's in my blood. I'm American. Best lean is when you're pumping gas and you put your feet against the little curb and the pump is on and your butt slash back up is against Against the vehicle. Feels like you're sitting down. It's so good. Sorry, that's unrelatable to me as a New Jersey native. We do not pump our own gas, okay? It's against the law. Anything under four hours is close by. Uh, edit, loving these guesses of my location all over the country. The number of states that fit the description kind of helps my point. I've never once felt like four hours is close by. Maybe that's because while I lived in the States, I never owned a, like a new car. I had a 1993 Buick Regal Custom. And so something being four hours away was also a breakdown and trying to figure out how to get home away. So the furthest I really went was like two hours, which still stays in the state. If for some God awful reason, I want to go to North Jersey, but I could go like to Hershey in Pennsylvania. I could go to Christiana in Delaware. I, I could do things, but four hours. I'd say that's a short road trip, but maybe I'm a different type of American, okay? Maybe maybe this is more of a Texas and California type of thing. But then again, I think the European equivalent would be, oh, that's only like a 40 minute walk away. That's me at least in London specifically. I'm like, oh, come on. It's just, you might as well just walk. I walk everywhere because it's enjoyable. There's lots of stuff to see. There's lots of live places you can stop in at. 40 minutes, nothing. On transport, an hour, that's fair. Anything further than that, I'm sorry. Where do you live? Morden? No. End of the line, end of my line. Excuse me, it's more than an hour in London? Where are you, Catford? I'm all right. No, no, have a nice party. I, I, I feel I'm just sick, okay? Just a little sick. In the touristy cafe restaurant I worked at, one, if they asked me for the nicest spot we had, <laughs> Yeah, sure. If they asked me what my recommendation was without seeing the menu first. Oh, you know what? That's interesting. I feel like I've asked people like what their recommendation is. I do ask the, the waiter what their recommendation is, but only after I've seen the menu and I'm like, I, I, I'm unaware of what else is on the menu that I could like. You know, I just want to see what their opinion is. They're clearly the expert. However, nine times out of 10, they're like, I don't know. I'll be like, have you, have you tried this? Is it good? And they'll say, I haven't had it. What? A Cheesecake Factory in the US, fun fact, you can't work the floor as a server until you've tried every single item on the menu so you can have an opinion about it. That, that's some good stuff right there. At least they'll know what they're talking about when I say, how good is this burrito? They're like, it's done, out, done. Next up, we got, I would walk to the table and they would say, hey, how you doing? This is the one that threw me off a lot at first. Why is this person asking me how I'm doing? <laughs> I'm just there to take their order. And lastly, uh, they would ask my name when I greeted them and took their order. That's lovely. Though. I feel like asking someone's name, it just shows like a good polite etiquette. Is that an American thing or more just uh, an American who's trying to be polite? All right, I, th I think that's positive. These days, whenever I get recognized when I'm out and about, I do try and make it an effort to ask the person's name because they come up to me like, oh, Evan, are you Evan? I like your videos. The least I can do is also return the favor and be like, what's your name? You know, nice to meet you. Is that super American? I don't, I'd hope not. Obvious signs, someone's an American. They typically only speak one language. Well, I believe the statistic is somewhere around 80% of Americans are monolingual, but that number is decreasing as more and more people are actually finding that learning another language is fun and easy. That could be you if you use today's video sponsor, Babbel. I reached out to Babbel earlier last year because I wanted to try their advanced German course. Most of my resources stopped before getting to B2, but Babbel's goes all the way up to B2 and more. Now, I started it in January and I'm very much nearly done the B2 course. How exciting. But Evan, what are you gonna do now with Babbel? Well, thankfully, Babbel has so many more very specific resources to help me get to that C1 level. The difference between B2 and C1 is huge amounts of practice and huge amounts of words. I know a lot of German food words, but I wanna expand my vocabulary usefully with Babbel, learning things like fermented and harmonious palate. Those are interesting ones and really help me when I'm describing food abroad. I can also take a course on sports, business German, how to write business emails, really actual applicable German. So now that I'm nearly done with Babbel's B2 course, I can actually choose what I wanna learn and there's no like specific path that I have to go down. I can go, you know what? I'd like to take Babbel's course on maybe plants. 
I love plants, fandoms, music. So far, I really enjoy how Babbel lessons have it structured so that when you first do a lesson, you basically just look at photos, it tells you what the things are, slowly but surely, you're then matching different words to the English translations, and then by the end of the lessons, you are having to fully recall what the words are by typing in manually. But if you're someone that's very early in your language learning journey, Babbel also have 14 courses that go all the way from your first beginning sentences of A1 all the way up to B2 to help you hit the ground running in under three weeks to be able to speak a foreign language. One of the great things about Babbel is the quality of the courses you're getting. These 14 languages that you can choose to take from the ground up are designed by hundreds of language experts, so you know you're actually getting a good quality education and not going to be learning any mistakes. So if one of your goals for 2024 is to learn a foreign language, dip your toes in with Babbel. Babbel can help you get you there. And if you are someone that already does use Babbel, I'd really love to hear your comments in the comment section below about what level you're at and uh, how you're finding it. And if you'd like to join me in committing to progressing your language learning journey this year, Sign up to Babbel using my link right here or the link in the description box below, and you can get 50% off lifetime access to all languages. Thank you very much to Babbel for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to some Reddit. When asked where they're from, they say the state and not the country. Okay, yes, we say the state because we think it's pretty obvious where we're from in terms of our accent, for the most part. If you have someone coming on, hey there, sir, how are you? Oh, uh, fine, thank you. And you're like, where are you from? You know from their accent where they're from. You're just trying to find out the state, right? And so sure, if you ask them where they're from, they're gonna say, oh, I come from Minnesota. Like, that's fine. It makes more sense. Otherwise, I actually purposefully only answer with the country first because I think it's funny because it subverts people's expectations. When people ask me where I'm from, first off, I go, oh, I'm from Chiswick. And then they go, where are you really from? And I'm like, wow, offensive. I'm from the States. And they're like, what part of the States? <laughs> I'm just hard to be around. <laughs> I think I've made that joke with every person that asked me the question. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Chiswick. Oh, I thought I heard something else in your accent. Actually, I'm from the States. All right, what part of the States? Rather than go through all those steps, that whole rigmarole of finding out what state, we just cut to the chase. You're welcome. So we say the state, you're like, I'm from Ontario. Yes, the top reply was, because when we say United States, the answer is always, well, obviously. See, see. I think it's fair. Month day year. I've made an entire video defending the month day year, though some of you have pointed out I'm defending the year, month, day. Despite the fact that I have adapted and I do use day, month, year, personally, I think the uh, year, month, day works best because that is similar to month, day, year. Personally, I just find, especially when you're saving files on your computer, I'm, like I save a lot of computer files. That sounds weird. I save computer files, I'm a robot man. I shoot a lot of videos, and a lot of these videos I need to have labeled the date that I film them, and so I label them. Let's just say January 5th. Well, 0105, perfect. And it's lined up in order in my computer. It's easy to see when I shot that. However, if I shot it with day month, then it would be 0501, which will be next to 0506, 0507, all the other months, days. It doesn't make sense in terms of numerical ordering. You could say, well, Evan, why don't you just put year first then? Yeah, it's similar, but there's no reason to put the year because the year only changes every 365 days. So like, I don't need that. I have a folder for the year and then I do month day. So that's, that's my defense. You can hate me all you want. <laughs> Weirdest moment for us on a trip was, where are you from? The US. Which state? Well, I grew up in Delaware. Oh, I met someone from Delaware. Do you know name? Uh, yeah, I do, believe it or not. That's happened to me so many times, but specifically with Ireland. I, I went on a trip to the Canary Islands and met this lovely fella and was like, oh, hey, John, nice to meet you. Uh, I know some Irish people. Do you know Sean Connolly? And he went, Evan, that's one of the most Irish names you could have come up with. But yes, actually I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. We have the same friend group. It's lovely. As an American man, I've been told repeatedly by European and Asian friends that we simply take up space, not by being fat, <laughs> as though we're entitled to it. Men in other countries apparently don't claim the same personal space we do. Wow, that's quite an interesting one. I believe I have read a paper talking about how everyone has a certain sized bubble of personal space that they feel is theirs and usually don't get that close. But Americans, I believe, have a slightly larger bubble. Maybe Europeans don't have as large of a bubble because we use public transportation and you know, you gotta get rid of that bubble pretty fast to stand on a peak time train. This was me holding a train. An obvious sign someone's an American, they ask for ice in their water. There is something nice about having a nice chilled drink. But then again, I never want more than like three cubes of ice in my water because otherwise you don't get as much of the water. Okay, I just, I don't wanna have to ask to refill it because when you're in a country that's not America, waiters don't come refilling drinks as often. So just three ice cubes, please. I like a little chill. Then again, uh, ice is the actual like most unsanitary place in a restaurant, usually the ice box. So just a word for the wise, maybe don't. 
go for too much ice. I wonder if Americans have been like super conditioned to really request ice in their drinks because all the restaurants in America fill their cups with ice. So that way the companies don't have to spend as much money actually giving you the soda that you paid for. That, yeah, just a thought. I was told Americans carry water bottles around like they're worried they'll never have access to clean water ever again. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, it's always good to stay hydrated. I, I sometimes keep a little water bottle in like my backpack pocket just because. Come on. This is actually a good point here. We have, I spent a few months living in Europe and I was always teased for having a water bottle, but I'd always make everyone look around and be like, but where are the water fountains? Exactly. There are no public water fountains that I find in London. It's very rare. Most all public buildings in the US have water fountains, even outdoor areas. I find it just nice to be able to have a nice bit of water everywhere you go. In the UK, they're like, no, go to a place and buy a water. I hate that. I hate that. I'd rather carry my water bottle from the hotel than deal with having a dehydrated day. Also, do you say water bottle or do you say water bottle? Water bottle, water bottle, water bottle, water bottle. Hi, sir. Can I have a water bottle? Hello, sir. Can I have a water bottle? Water bottle. Sounds like a Pokemon. All right. In Arizona, it's definitely a concern. Yeah, if you're going to go to a hot place, probably meant to have some water, right? Y'all. Yaldiv is also one of my favorites. I mean, I didn't even grow up in a southern state, but y'all is just a nice thing to say. Actually, people from the north of my state do have a penchant for saying, you guys. Not you, you guys. One person, hey you. Two people, hey you guys. I have made a video about the New Jersey accent uh, quite a few years back. So if you uh, wanna know more about why I talk the way I do sometimes, uh, that is linked above. When they speak, it gives them away. Well, you could say that about a lot of places. And also parts of the US sound similar to parts of Canada. Like, so when in doubt, you could just ask. I'm American and I was at a McDonald's in Montreal early on a Sunday morning. Ooh, interesting setting. Uh, I was fourth or fifth in line and each of the patrons before me was greeted in French. When I got to the counter, the clerk confidently said, welcome McDonald's, what can I get for you in English? It was a bit weird. I was alone, I hadn't spoken to anyone, wasn't wearing anything with English words on it. I wasn't wearing a baseball cap. Nothing outward said I was an Anglophone and yet the counter person just knew. Maybe they didn't know I was American, but they sure as heck knew I wasn't going to be greeted in English. I'm from Vermont and I go up to Montreal pretty often. Uh, there's a lot of plaid shirts and canvas pants in my wardrobe. I've been told that's a dead giveaway. I started paying attention and if I'm wearing a t-shirt or a plain button down, I get pegged as an American way less often. Really? That's fascinating. I do feel like sometimes you can really tell that someone is English. Like there's just a certain vibe, not London. That's at this point hard to tell. But when someone's from like an English town, you can tell they just have a certain look. I feel like maybe that's a thing as well in the States. Whereas I just know it as, hey, if he's wearing a baseball cap, probably American. I love wearing a baseball cap, keeps the sun out of my eyes and I don't have to worry about the sides. I like it. Calling someone mother casually. Really? Americans, do you do this? I, I've i never done this as an American. I don't just casually throw mother in there. Is that, is that a thing? What is this, Samuel L. Jackson in this thread? I don't know if you're trying to make that happen, but it's got a lot of upvotes. It's not like Australians saying the word It's not quite that, is it? Gute Scheiße, nein, das ist nicht möglich. Yeah, I once spent an hour trying to convince a German that saying good shit is a compliment. That is a funny one. This is shit, bad. This is the shit, though it not. Shorts and running shoes. Dude, come on, what, I, I, what? With a long sleeve shirt, ah. Oh. Sorry, we like to be, be fit. <laughs> Smiling at strangers. Okay, I'll, I mean, this is a positive stereotype. We'll take it. Claiming to be of a certain nationality, i.e. Irish, but they can't even locate the eponymous country on a map. That's not something that's an obvious sign. When Americans say I'm Irish or whatever, it's implicit that they're talking about their lineage. I would disagree with this comment only because so many of them will say things like, well, I'm Irish and I think this. That's not usually pertinent to the conversation, which is usually about something like actual Ireland and the politics involved. And so saying you're Irish, it is not true. You can say I'm of Irish descent. It's not the same thing at all. It's like cosplaying as an Irish person. Like I have a lot of German heritage and I know quite a lot of the language, but I wouldn't go around saying I'm German and therefore here's my opinion because that's just not right. They're super friendly and they talk to people on public transportation. Yeah, my mom did that when I took her to the UK. She just kept trying to talk to people. And I was like, mom, you can do that out of London, but don't do it in London. Don't embarrass me. I actually made a whole video with my mom about her experiences when she was in the UK, if you wanna watch that. They talk loud. 
very loud. I find that I still have that. I was hoping that wasn't an American trait. I thought that was just a me thing that sometimes when I talk, I have a bit of a louder voice, not a YouTube loud voice. I feel like so many YouTubers still do that thing where I just feel like they're trying to pretend like they have more energy. And so they yell a lot, Ugh, turn it down, bruh. Like you don't have to yell. You're in a room alone. No one's here but me. I don't have to yell. <laughs> Referring to Europe as if it were a country. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They'll use any form of measurement other than metric. Freedoms per eagle is a popular one. Sometimes it's just nice to use the human element. So most Americans know how big a football field is. So you hear like how many football fields it is. Uh, I have definitely done that in the past, even in the recent past, just because it makes sense to me. But yeah, we, we don't use the metric as much as we should. I can't tell the differences between the American and the Canadian accents because I'm not from the country. They both sounded the same to me. Really? I find that a bit surprising. Americans sound like me, kind of. I'm a bit wish-washy now because it goes too British every once in a while, but Canadians are just a bit more, there's a little bit more in the nose. There's a little bit more nasally. Also, the O sound is quite interesting in a lot of Canadian dialects. Like instead of saying, it's about time, they'll be like, it's about time. It's about time I went there. I feel like the meme is that Canadians say it's a boot time, but I've never really met a Canadian that said a boot as opposed to a boat. Usually when I'm watching a new YouTuber, I play this game called, is he Canadian or American? And then eventually the O will come out and I'll hear like, oh yeah, uh, I went um, over there and it was about that time. And I was like, got it, Canadian man. Some of the coolest friends I have, but damn, do they use time to express distance? Yeah, like, oh, I am 10 minutes away from you. Yes, I feel like that's a human element. That makes way more sense. How far away? 10 minutes, so that way you know how long. Rather than having you to do math by saying, I'm, I don't know, 800 feet, I'm three miles away. Why not just say, or hey, the metric, five kilometers, something like that. Why not just say the time? Uh, maybe this is an American part of me, but I've kept that up and I just think expressing how far away you are in time makes more sense to me. Especially these days, you got your Google Maps and stuff, you put it in and it says you'll be there in 11 minutes. Tell them 11 minutes. Don't say, I'm approximately 3.5 kilometers to your, oh, 3.4 kilometers to your, oh, to, come on. My friend went to Germany recently and what people said about Americans is that you can spot them a mile away because they're the ones wearing pajamas in public. What? Apparently in other countries, at least Germany, they dress a little bit more formal and less baggy clothes. Um, does this count? <laughs> I'm wearing like, uh, I'm wearing sweatpants and a ni nice comfy hoodie. It's called having the drip, folks, okay? I'm in my comfortable home. I could have been wearing nothing down there, hypothetically. I will say I do find the modern style of like wearing this type of thing and even more loose fitting, like baggy stuff. I don't really like the look of that. I, I like to go out in London and wherever I go, wearing a pair of actual trousers or nice looking joggers, like the fitted ones with the hem but everyone has their own tastes. I don't know, you can fight against modern fashion or you can just wear what you like and uh, privately complain about it online. <laughs> As an American, I can say absolutely so many Americans are so <laughs> loud. Shut up! Expecting to drive to everything. Well, our cities are built around driving. No, they were bulldozed for driving. They were actually built like normal cities, most of them. It was just that, you know, Car lobbies, automotive lobbies. They assume everyone knows about American geography. Hey, we, we do kind of, you know, the forefronts of culture, but they know nothing about any other country. Yeah, we only need to know the, the country that matters, the US, come on now. Immediately asking someone what they do for a living when meeting them. Our jobs and our work are our entire identity. I was pronouncing that really weird because I wanted to say RR. RR, our entire identity, Ugh, just tongue twister. Yeah, but also it's an interesting part. I don't know, what you do for a living is a really easy way to relate to someone. Asking someone what you do for a living and then say, oh, I used to do that or uh, my, my girlfriend does that. I find that just yet again, good social skills. Maybe this is an American bias coming out of me though. One thing I do find Americans ask that hasn't been brought up in this thread before though is finances. I find that Americans are way more loose about speaking about how much money they make, how much their car costs, how much their house costs. Whereas in England specifically, that's not really a standard thing. There is a slight tiny taboo on speaking so openly about that type of thing. You can ask someone, but it might not be seen as super polite. In fact, at some point, uh, I told someone I do YouTube for a living and they literally responded with like, oh, how much do you make? And I was like, it's a bit of a personal question. I don't know, I just feel like that that, that is rude. <laughs> I just can't imagine asking someone how much they make. That's a question that I would never ask someone. If they give that information freely, cool. But then I'd also be like, 
Wow, you think you're up your own? I don't care about how much you make, okay? Just don't, don't tell me. Just tell me about the good times. Let's not bring up money in a conversation. At least in Finland, I find them to be quite friendly, easy to get along with, and genuine. They aren't afraid to ask questions if it's not clear to them. That's nice. Of course, shoes. Laughter and the way they carry themselves without thinking much about what others will say. I'd say those are positive attributes. Americans are shoe snobs. Excuse me. Eh? They don't think they are, but they are. Setting aside wealthier business types, Americans generally wear more on-brand, on-trend, high-quality shoes than others. Citation needed. Do you really feel this? I, I wouldn't say this at all. No foreskin. <laughs> It's true. Now, if you want more obvious signs that someone's an American, I made a video on the shit Americans say. I actually made two separate videos on those, so watch those if you haven't yet, because boy, are they a sad doozy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today's video, and hopefully I'll see you around this channel next week on Sunday, as usual. Bye. Subscribe, thank you.